What is going on guys, Mr. Singh here and today I've got a video on how you can pick and decode a HU66 lock. Now some of the reasons you might want to pick a lock is if you have locked yourself out of your car. Um, if you've bought a car, say from an auction and it's come without a key. Uh, or if you're uh, going to a customer who's locked themselves out of their car. Now, the HU66 lock um, is found in Volkswagens, Audis, Skodas, Seat, uh, Porsche, and various other uh, VW Group cars. Um, this is just the barrel from a door of a Volkswagen Golf. It's from a scrapyard, so I don't actually have the key to the lock. And just to show you, I've just got a dummy blank here and we'll show you that this lock is in fact locked there you go it does not move and this usually sits in the driver's door and your key goes in that end and then this end the paddle that attaches to the door lock module and that turns a little cog and that will unlock your door now onto the picking side of it um, to do this, I will be using a leashy tool. Uh, these are readily available online. They make them for all types of cars. And this particular one, as you can see, is, if it will focus, the HU66 version 3, uh, the 2 in 1 pick. And it's a 2 in 1 because it can both pick and decode your lock. Now, let's get into this. So, uh, with the lock in one hand, uh, the leashy tool in the other, to start off with, if you open up this uh, sort of bracket arm thing on the side, this is a tensioning arm. And now, when the tool is in the lock, you will need this to rotate the lock uh, as you pick it. On the right hand side of the tool, you'll see there's these two arms which move around. And if you look closely, you will see they attach to a couple of uh, prongs on the left hand side. And those are used for actually pushing the wafers inside of the lock for opening it. And when you insert the tool to start with, you want to make sure that both of these arms are fully retracted and in the middle. Just because otherwise it might get caught up as you're pushing it in and you don't want to break your tool or damage your lock. And I'm going to be uh, trying to capture this as best I can, uh, but the angle is a bit of an awkward angle. Um, but yeah, so with the lock in my left hand and the tool in the right hand, I'm going to be tensioning with my thumb, with my left thumb, as you can see there. And while tensioning, I'll be using the arms to pick the lock. It's important to maintain tension throughout uh, the lock picking process, otherwise uh, the pins which you, or the wafers which you have already picked, they will uh, flick back into their locked position. And if I just zoom in on the tool. So as I said, pick in my right hand, lock in the left hand, tensioning with my left thumb. And I think that's as good as we'll get for seeing the tool. Um, to start off with, before you even try and move any of the wafers, you want to just take each arm and move along the pins. So you can see the pins are numbered here. Uh, on the bottom we've got 1 to 6 and on the top we've got 3 to 8. Now those don't actually correspond to where the pins actually are, they are just labelled on opposite sides for clarity. And if you take any of the arms, either of the arms, and just go along the tool, and if you feel along, um, just moving the tool up and down to feel to see if there is a pin uh, on that number. This will differ if you're picking up or down. And by picking up or down, I mean if you're picking up, you're pushing the tension up. If you're picking down, you're pushing the tension down. So if we go along the bottom row, if we start with pin number one, 
you'll see as I move pin one down or as I move the arm down on pin number one there is a wafer there as you can see the arm stops if we move across to pin number two you'll see the arm just freely goes past number two and then if we move to the uh, second arm you'll see on number one the arm will just go straight up and not stop at a wafer whereas on number two it will go up and it will hit a wafer which is in its locked position and now on the HU66 uh, the pins or at least on this particular older lock the pins are on opposing sides so you have one three five and seven on one side and then two four six and eight on the other and just to confirm that I'll run through one three five and seven are nothing on the top whereas they are present on the bottom and if I was picking up they would just be flipped so one three five seven would be on top and two four six and eight would be along the bottom and now when it comes to picking the HU66 there is actually a preferred order in which to pick uh, each each pin and uh, I'll put that on the screen now and that is one five eight four two three seven and six okay enough about the lock let's start picking it so with my left thumb applying the tension picking down and if we start all the way over at pin number one you see that the the arm stops there and if you just push past we get a nice click on number one so that's uh, pin number one picked and we'll move over to number five again if you see the arm stops there and then we just push it until it clicks and that is pin number five picked as well and then if we go over to number eight and number eight on this particular lock is already set uh, from the get go by the tool so there's nothing to actually pick there but you may have to on your particular lock and then back to number four Again, number four is already set and down to number two again just push in until you get a nice little click and number three and this one is being a bit stiff if you can see that the arm is flexing slightly and if you run into this problem all you need to do is let off a tiny tiny bit of tension from the tension arm you see that I'm just slightly taking the tension off and then you get a click and that is it the lock has been picked so in my particular case I did not need to pick all of the wafers to get the lock open and that is because the tool actually sets some of the wafers for you it varies from lock to lock so you may need to still pick all of the wafers on your lock but as you can see uh, the lock is picked Okay, so now that we have got this picked, uh, we'll move on to the decoding side. And the decoding is done while the lock is in the open position. So if I just rotate that, you can see this lock is open currently. And the key is turning. So if I put the tool down and just zoom in on the right hand side, you will see that uh, the numbers that I was talking about earlier that represent the pins there are also numbers on the side which represent uh, the specific uh, code for the for the key and to decode we simply have to go through all of the pins and just see that where they stop along the right hand side scale so if we start at number one you'll see that number one is in fact a one number two is a 2 if you can see on the right hand side that lines up with number 2 number 3 is also a 2 and it's important to note that when you're decoding you don't need to be pushing extra pressure down you just need to stop where the 
uh, where the arm stops uh, where the pin is in its picked position and then moving across to number four that is also a number two number five is that's partly between a one and a two so for this instance we'll note down one and two and then we can go back through and pick up and then read uh, redo the decoding side of it uh, number six is a two number seven is a two and number eight is also a two so a lot of twos in this lock but that is the decoding process nice and simple and then from that you can get a key cut for this particular lock and that should work straight away uh, the specific decoding side of it uh, isn't isn't too complicated like I said it's literally just a case of seeing where the arm stops uh, for the pin once it's been picked um, but any any good locksmith should be able to cut your key from that and then from there you'll have a working key for your lock that is all I have for today's video that is the HU66 lock picked and decoded like I said this is used across many Volkswagen group cars so Volkswagens, Audis, Skodas, Seats, Porsche and many many others and if you found this video helpful be sure to drop a like and leave me a comment if there's anything you want me to cover in any future videos and please do subscribe if you like my content thanks for watching